You know what's one of the most important parts of promoting a business or a movie or whatever? It's the poster. And a lot of famous movies have really good posters, like the classic 1979 Alien movie with the oozing egg, or we have the really nostalgic Star Wars poster. And while these posters are really hard to make in its pure form, with recent image manipulation technology, it actually got kind of easier. Now, for example, using only PowerPoint, I was able to create this poster of the 1977 film The Rescuers, and it was actually kind of easy, and I'm going to show you some tips and tricks so you can make the same thing too. Now, just to note, if you have Photoshop, I would recommend doing that, even though this tutorial is going to use PowerPoint. And if you don't have either of these, Google Slides work, and it's free, but it's not as good, so I wouldn't recommend it if you have these other two options. Alright, so first, let's just go through some of the aspects you can see in the completed poster, and then go back to actually making it. So, it's really important to note that even if you haven't seen this film, you can basically tell who the main characters are, because they take up a large portion of the screen. And it's good to have structure, and a good way to do that is to have big main characters. It's also general to know that characters on the left side of the screen should face towards the left, and characters on the right side of the screen should face towards the right. Now if you have an image and the character isn't facing the right way, look into that and how to change that and make him face the right way. It's also good to have this axis of symmetry, we either split the main characters or the color scheme or both in my instance. Alright, now let's get into some PowerPoint tips. Now this isn't a full-fledged tutorial on PowerPoint, so definitely get to know it first, but mainly we're just going to be using the Remove Background tool, which is found in the left corner of Picture Format, and you'll be able to select certain aspects of pictures or remove certain aspects to just get your desired effect. So this is really good for, well, removing the background, obviously. Alright, so the other tool that we're going to use is Corrections here, Picture Corrections. This helps change the contrast and brightness of your image. It can really help give it a cinematic look, especially increasing the brightness. Alright, now as another general rule, this one's kind of easy. This tool's kind of easy, but I'm going to go through it anyway. The Bring Forward or Backward tool brings images behind others or in front of others, obviously and you can send it to the back or to the front using the drop down menu. Now the rotate option can be used to flip your pictures horizontally, vertically, or whatever. And this is what you can use to help them face the other direction if that's what you need to happen. And the last tool we're gonna use is the color tool, which can be used to change the overall color scheme of an image, either saturation, the tone, or just completely recoloring it to a specific color. Also found in the color tool, there are more variations under the more variations tab where you can pick specific colors to change your image to. So let's get started. You're going to want to open a blank presentation. Now in order to get this to look the way we want it, like a poster, you have to go to the design tab and then over to the right where it says slide size and then choose custom slide size. Now from there you should be able to change the width and the length to whatever you want. So we're going to change the width to 8.5 inches and the height to 11 inches. And this should make it look like a standard US sheet of paper. And then click Ensure Fit. Alright, so now what you're going to do is click and drag to select the text boxes and then just delete them. So now we have a completely blank slide ready to be filled with whatever the heck you want to put in it. Alright, so the next step is going to be going to Google Images and finding the images of whatever you want. Now this can be characters, or backgrounds, or effects, and we'll get into that a little bit later. But if you find an image you want, simply copy it, and then paste it into PowerPoint. And then once it's in there, you should be able to do pretty much whatever you want with it. Now it's good to note that if you're making a copyright free poster, or you're trying to make something that will actually get you money, you're going to want to go to the Tools tab, and then that will bring down a drop-down menu called Usage Rights, and you're going to want to select Labeled for Reuse. This is going to pull up a bunch of copyright-free images you can use however you want, and you can still get money from it. Alright, so here we have all the characters I found. I removed the background, and I placed them how I wanted it to. So, now what we're going to do is add a title. Now, it's good to add your title and your tagline early on because once you fill up the poster with a bunch of stuff, it's going to be really hard to go back and add it in. It's going to feel squished. And another thing that I did was make the characters pop a little bit 
by right-clicking them, selecting Format Picture, and then going to the Effects tab and then Glow. And then from there, you should have a size and transparency box where you can kind of make them pop a little more. So obviously, don't make it too noticeable, but it really helps your character stand out a little bit better. Alright, so next I added a background, which is an image for the movie, and then I sent it to the back. And now, since it wasn't quite big enough, I added a black box at the bottom and sent that to the back just to kind of fill it up. And we'll cover it up with effects later so it's not so rough. So I wanted to split the background so I could have two color schemes. So to do that, I used the Remove Background tool to roughly split it in half. And then I went to the Color tool. From there, I selected the color tones and the color saturation slightly in order to make it appear a little more blue. After I did that, I used the Send Backward tool and sent it back just enough so it appeared in front of the other background. Now keep the other background there because that's the one we're going to change to make it look more red since it's appearing through the split side. So we went to the color tool and made it a little more red. And none of the reds really fit, so I went to the More Variations tab and selected the brightest red I could find. And if you still couldn't find one you want, you can select the More Color tool and that'll bring you to a lot more. Now that we have our background, now would be a good time to change the contrast of our characters. So simply select your character and go to the Contrast tab. From there, you should be able to select the pre-made settings, and they should look pretty decent, usually. But if they still aren't to your liking, all that you have to do is right-click on the image, and go to Format Picture, Picture, and then Color Corrections. And from there, you should have specific little bars that you can slide around to get it however you want. Now typically, a little less brightness and a little more contrast is going to make your characters look a little more cinematic and really help them make like it's one picture and not just a bunch of pictures put together. Alright, and now I fast forward and all of my characters have good amounts of contrast and brightness now. So now what we're going to do is cover up the rough edge of this color split. So how I did this was I just inserted a box and added a glow to it and then lowered its transparency and sent it behind the characters. Now this will help cover up our red and blue scheme. And then I did the same thing for the little blue box. And we're going to cover this up even more with effects. So let's go to Google Images. Now Google Images has some fantastic particle effects. The only problem is if you go and find one and try and copy it into PowerPoint, it usually doesn't work. It brings the transparent background with it, which is kind of counterintuitive. And the Remove Background tool does not help in the slightest. So what should help this is you go back to the Tools tab and then select Color. From there, you should see a transparent option. If you click that, that'll limit all the search options to images that should be transparent. Now, copying still might not work, so just to be safe, you're gonna right click and click Save Image As, and then you're gonna put it into PowerPoint that way. All right, and here we have all of my personal favorite particle effects. And just in case you're wondering, I looked up lens flares, gold blast, red smoke, and fireworks to find these specific ones. But there are a lot out there, you just gotta look for them. All right, so as you can see, I added in all the particle effects, and I used the color tool to make them more red or more blue, depending on which side they were on. And you can really see, I really stayed true to this axis of symmetry and really tried to cover it up that way. And technically, the poster could have been done here. But there's a few more things that I want to show you. Okay, so by this point you have so many layers, you might have trouble selecting the image you want. So for instance, I'm trying to select this firework, and I can't because it keeps clicking the image in front of it. So in order to do that, you could just spam the tab key, or you could go to Arrange, and then go all the way down to Selection Panel. And that'll bring up a little side box. Now from here, it'll have all of the layers on this slide, and you can rename them for convenience and click on it, and it should bring up that layer. And this is really useful for just cluttered posters like this one with a lot of layers and a lot of particle layers. Also to note though, if you want to select a character, make sure you select the box on the edge where the mouse makes the four little arrows and not just click in the middle of the image because it'll still default to clicking on the image in front of it. So make sure if you click tab or you find the picture you want in the selection tab, make sure to use the four arrow key. 
So one last thing I did was add a certain small glow effect to different parts of the poster to make it really look like those lens flares were glowing. So how I did that was I went to shapes and then clicked freeform shape. And then clicking on that, you should be able to, each time you click with the mouse, it should draw a line connecting to that point. So I just drew a little outline of say Bernard's ear face here. And then I right clicked it and went to format picture. Now from there, I lowered the line transparency all the way to 99, just so you couldn't see the blue. And then after that, I went to the effects tab and then went to glow. Now from there, I selected a gold in color and messed with the size and transparency a little bit to really just make it look like the lens flare was really shining on his face. And this is really useful just to help your picture all come together. And like I said before, make it look like one picture, not a bunch of pictures put together. I also copied that same line, pasted it, and then moved it up a little higher just so the glow had a little more depth to it, and then I lowered that transparency a little more to make the brightness not as much. And this really, really will help out your poster if you're willing to put in the time. And that pretty much concludes the tutorial. Now just a few separate notes to add. Never get discouraged. Your poster is probably not going to look that great till the very end as it was in this case. Just never give up. Always try new things. I was never very good at this at first. I've been doing this for a few years. So if I can do it, you can too. Trust me. I'm not very good with technology. So just do your best and keep trying. It'll turn out eventually, if not with this poster, then with the next. And a lot of the great things about PowerPoint is it's pretty user friendly. So I really prefer PowerPoint to say Google Slides or maybe even Photoshop. And hopefully you can create some pretty cool posters in the future. So good luck and God bless.